Y'all, it finally happened. In all of my lesbian years of life, I never thought it would happen to me. It wasn't until Pride 2024, I received my first strap pick from a woman. I've never been so mortified in my life. And at this point, I have leveled up in all lesbian ways. I now look, I hardly doubt that I have an audience full of studs and shit like that. I, I just hardly doubt it. But to the men, let me tell y'all something, bro. Never send a woman an unsolicited dick pic, bro. That shit is bad. Look, a lot of men are gonna send that to a woman because a man would welcome nudes from a woman even if he don't know her. That's cool to us. But a woman don't feel the same way about that, bro. Like, they gotta find you attractive and shit like that, bro. And they gotta want to see the shit, bro. And she gonna let you know if she wanna see that Pennsylvania, bro. And good. And guess what else? Bro, that shit a crime in a lot of states, bro. You going to jail. And even if it's not a crime, they got some women out here who will literally screenshot that bitch and put it on Facebook and Instagram and all that and tag your stupid ass. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't know that was a thing in the stud world, bro. I've experienced my fem for fem life. I've experienced my U-Haul lesbian life. I've experienced the huge age gap life. I've experienced my DV partner. I've experienced my woman having a wife on this side. I've experienced being the bender and not just the bend E. I've experienced it all. Like, I've reached all my lesbian stars. I can just completely be taken at the game. Like, please, y'all, don't talk to me no more. I can't believe I experienced this. What? You know, it's still very interesting that a woman would send a fake dick pic. That's crazy. The strap? Like, I wonder what it was like. Like, did she do some shit like this with the strap? Like, come on, bro. What is she doing? Because I would think you could just Google a generic picture of a strap and just send it to the woman. But nah, she probably was butt ass naked in there, booty ball naked, with the thing on her and all that kind of stuff. I used to work with a stud, man. She used to keep it on at all times. She said, you just never know when it could go down. I said, all right, I hear you. If you like it, I love it. <laughs> What's going on? What's your Mariad? Now, next up is Mr. Ricardo, 12 year marriage, a long time that, more than a decade. Man says, don't fall into the mistake of just being a provider and things like that. Because if you are not there emotionally, you'll come home one day and find out that she's been messing with her gym trainer. No, Ricardo, you me... <laughs> messed up. You see you? Your problem. Your problem. Is this a cry for help? Are you telling us that this is what happened and you just decided to- Hey bro, I'ma keep it real with y'all, man. Even if you are doing everything right, if you got the wrong woman, it's still gonna happen. You know what? To the wrong woman, the only thing that's better than attention is new attention from another man. It's really like you can't even stop it. Some women are just built to be Jezebels, bro. They just built to be for the streets, man. It's just in them. And some women, whether it be the way they was brought up culturally, the way their home was set up, or just the way they are morally, bro, they just not gonna cheat. But I think the latter is the minority. I'm gonna keep it real because a lot of women cheat, bro. Real talk. You know, when I used to hang out with a couple of females and things of that nature, dog, the things that they would say to me that they would never say to their man is, whew, man, it'll make you be scared to be in a relationship, dog. With the 12 years, because this is insane. This is, it's, no, no, people, we don't think you're gonna understand what I'm going on yesterday, though. <laughs> no, that one, yeah, that one, yeah, level me. Akeem, married for seven years, and before the ox is not me, nobody the foolishness. Akeem married for seven years, just him, him just left me. Him said, you'll get bored, but I guess boredom never kill anybody yet. Stay the course. You guess? Sound like you bored out of your wits. Uh, any day you're chip lick, you just have good on for the divorce papers. Because what? Hey, people, the, the, the married men in Jamaica are going through it. Please send up a prayer anyway. Then when you got church this week, send up a prayer for the married men in my Jamaica, please. I thank you. Jamaica Observer, you know? Problematic. Bro, I'ma keep it real with y'all. The only time I ever see married couples that will remotely make me think that they're really, really happy, and I'm talking about just in love, they can't get away from each other, is on social media. I don't see that shit in real life. Boy, most of the dudes I know who married, man, I ain't gonna say they're miserable. They just, you know, going through the day-to-day -day motions, bro. They ain't, it's like they're not up, they're not down. It's just they're indifferent about marriage. It's not like they get super excited to go home and see their wife, right? I don't see that in real life. Not to say that it doesn't exist, because this is also an anecdotal experience of mine but man i don't know a whole bunch of dudes that just head over heels for a woman that they've been married to for five seven years but i just don't see that all the time right and i'm not trying to discount it or nothing like that because it probably does exist somewhere but the only place i see it really is on social media i'm gonna take my hair down what's up you you want to go for who got the worst baby daddy i'm gonna be exposing myself but this is my time to shine this trend was made for me i was 19 young dumb vulnerable you name it i met this 25 year old 
he was in the military he had these other kids he convinced me that he didn't see them because he wasn't allowed to travel a certain distance um to go see them and since they lived in missouri and he lived in dc he told me that he could only see them at certain points i asked him what he wanted to get them for christmas he said child support is their gift again i was not super smart i was 19. i didn't know shit. this man begged me to get pregnant begged me to get pregnant he promised me a life he promised me a family he promised me a ring he promised me marriage a house you name it the whole nine i said okay sounds fine i've never heard this from a man must be real right so i get my birth control taken out i know that was stupid bear with me within a week i was pregnant he then proceeds to ask me well why would you get pregnant i'm sorry what i didn't get pregnant on my own you were actually there too then i was having some complications they thought that i was leaking uh amniotic fluid when i was around 12 weeks so i had to get all these extra scans and whatnot um all of these doctors were consulting with each other and they were like i don't know what's going on i'm not sure why you're leaking amniotic fluid uh anyways they told me that i was gonna have to get a dnc and that i would likely miscarry over the weekend i was obviously distraught this was my first and only pregnancy uh and he said it's not that big of a deal we can just make another one uh anyways it ended up being an std that he gave me that was causing me to leak fluid from my cervix um and yeah because he was cheating on me the whole time we were together i was super sick when i was pregnant i had hyperemesis gravidarum which causes um constant vomiting uh, i would vomit around 20 to 30 times hey you know what not all people are created equal some people have wrinkle free brains without a single crevice in it i'm just keeping it real with y'all because at 19 years old you know if a woman would have told me some crazy ass shit like mm, i don't have none of my kids i got three of them but you know they stay with their daddy i was smart enough even at the age of 19 to be like that don't sound right all the women i know got their kids even if they got 10 of them bitches you see what i'm saying i had discernment at 19 you get what i mean and then she talking about this nigga said well why you let that happen and it takes two to tango and then he doubled back and said we could just get another one if this one don't make it uh nah you should have left that nigga alone right then and there but we're gonna continue on with this story all right y'all today's video is being brought to you today by pookie will right and guess what he a hood nigga he ain't paid me shit man he low-key just made me do it i ain't have a choice so here you go plug him in right there man y'all go check him out real quick today every day for three months two months whatever i was in the hospital once or twice a week, one of the times I had to be admitted into the hospital in the antepartum unit. He did not come with me to any of the hospital visits. Uh, I think he came to one doctor's appointment. He told me that he was not working, but that he would not be coming to the hospital to stay with me while I was sick. Um, and I ended up being alone because my mom had to work. Yeah, I ended up breaking up with him because he was not supportive at all went through most of my pregnancy alone he comes back around because he wanted our son to have his last name that's what i'm assuming uh he weasels his way back into my life we get back together we get engaged even truly the worst months and years of my life now look she was young and dumb and she was pregnant and you know how the hormonal thing goes cool so he went in there wooed her and gave her these sweet nothings in her ear but dog somebody in her life should have told her bro you need to run for the hills from this dude real talk man and she steadily went back to this dude and guess what you know she a product of a single mother because she said her mama had to work well why you ask your daddy to come she ain't got no daddy bro because i would have told my daughter listen first of all i'm whooping his ass <laughs> And number two, leave this man alone, bro. God damn. Uh, he proposes. I say yes. We end up moving to Texas. Um, but on the way to Texas, because we drove, we stopped in Missouri, which is where his family is from. Uh, I found out later on that the entire time that we were driving from Virginia to Missouri and Missouri to Texas, he was texting and calling other women and figuring out how he was going to meet up with. Him. So when we got to Missouri, it was the middle of a snowstorm. And um, the day after I get there, I met, I had met his two oldest kids uh, the night before and they were with me. And then I also had our son who was five months at the time. He left in the morning uh, in the middle of a snowstorm at, with no food, no money, no car, nothing. And he said, oh, I'm, you know, I'll be back soon. He didn't come back for six or seven hours. 
uh, and here I am like, what am I supposed to feed these kids? He went to go meet a girl the day after I met his kids for the first time ever. Oh, oh, and I almost forgot because I had a uh, second or third degree tears when I gave birth. Um, and he convinced me that around three weeks after I gave birth that it would be okay to engage in uh, schmecks again. Say, bro, the desire to get some of that sweet Virginia real estate has to be one of the strongest forces on earth because I'ma assume this a brother we talking about, right? Cause she black, I'ma assume he's black, right? Bro, do you know how horny you gotta be to drive in a snowstorm to go get some ads, bro? Oh, Lord and mercy, boy. Listen, that's a powerful emotion, bro. It's like a pool of black tar. Once it catches you, you're caught. Or whatever that boy Leonardo to say. <laughs> oh, that's cold blooded. And I was like, no, I don't think so. Um, I'm actually still bleeding a lot. And he was like, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, the other mom of my kids was fine at this point. So you'll be fine too. So yeah, that happened. Uh, when we moved to Texas, he wouldn't allow me to get a job. He wouldn't allow me to drive for the most part. Finally bought me a car at one point, um, but it was janky. He wouldn't allow me to get a job. He wouldn't allow me to uh, go to school because he wanted to provide. So he got us an apartment and he we were near a military base. He would leave at the crack of dawn in the morning and he would come home and he would lock himself, himself in our bedroom until late at night when he would eventually unlock it and let me and the baby come into the room. Now look, I don't want a victim shame or nothing like that, but baby, I could, I, I just don't know what's wrong with you. Like at all, bro. I don't, I, like, listen, what in the hell was you thinking, bro? You should have ran for the hills. Man, come on, bro. Nah, there's always two sides of the story. She could be making this whole story up and whatever. She could just be a bitter baby mama. I'm leaning towards she's not, but she could be. Give him the benefit of the doubt. But obviously he doing something foul in that room. He got to lock you and the baby out. Uh, so that he could talk to other women. Um. He wouldn't talk to me in the morning. He wouldn't talk to me in the evening. He wouldn't have sex with me. Um, I did all the cooking, cleaning, child rearing, everything. Um, yeah, it was it, it was pretty bad. Um, to this day, he has only seen our son once in seven years. I once got a child support check for $6.00. He has a new baby every six to six months to a year um, with a new woman because he basically couch surfs and convinces them to have his baby. So he has somewhere to stay and has some type of obsession with breeding, I think. Uh, the funniest part about it is that he calls himself a dating coach. Oh, oh, and he changed his name legally to Pharaoh because he believes that he's Egyptian royalty which is why he believes in having multiple women and multiple babies by multiple women. Um, so yeah. Oh, and I, because of all these children that he has, I, that's why I barely get any child support, which is why I, you know, was basically like, okay, I'll be the sole provider. Uh, sometimes I do get child support, $30 or 60, depending. Um, but a lot of months it doesn't come. Do I win? Hey man, these young women know how to pick them, don't them? And then they gonna expect one of y'all or me to come and play cleanup, man, bro. Like every red flag was apparent from the beginning. She just looked past it. You know what's crazy? He a hobo sexual, H-O-B-O, -O, not the other one because I don't want YouTube tripping. H-O-B-O, -O, goddammit, yeah. But he did all of that in the beginning and she still decided to rear his children. Oh Lord, Ember, that's crazy, bro. Like you're not supposed to do that, man. Common sense, dog. you know what I'm saying? And then they'll say, well, I don't believe in going to the hit man but you believe in premarital sex i ain't saying that they equal but i'm just saying where do we draw the line but back to what i was saying he's a whole bowl sexual that mean he was touching the back of the oven bro he was cramming it in there tan ass up hella holly ooh, all that there and she was digmatized she wasn't in love she was just addicted to what the dick did that's what it was bro and a woman to keep that baby just because of that lord have mercy now you're getting 30 dollars every once in a blue moon for that child you made your bed not lying it I divorced my wife because the way that she started dressing. I told her from, from the jump that I don't like women to dress provocative. I don't like that stuff at all. You have to dress modest, you know what I'm saying? Only dress provocative if it's just me and you inside the house. 
So she started hanging out with these girls from a job. And, you know, I met them. And I'm instantly just thinking in my mind that this is not a good group right here. This is one of them groups where she's not going to want to feel like she's being left out and stuff like that. And I told her, I said, I don't think you should be hanging out with these chicks because all these chicks are single. You know what I'm saying? None of these, none of these chicks are married. You know, single women, they tend to get married women in trouble. So after about like a month, you know what I'm saying, with her chilling with these girls, she started dressing like how they was dressing. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, where are you going with that on? And then she told me, she like, it's just an outfit. It's not, it's not much. I'm just, you know, just dressing for the occasion. I'm like, no. Nah. I said, now nah, you got to take that off. I'm like, no. Nah, I don't care who you hanging with. You can't put that on, man. You're not going to go out there dressed like that. And instead of her going to change, she left anyway. She said, no, this is what I'm going to wear. All my friends are dressing like this, and this is just what I'm going to wear. Okay. When she came back, it only take one time to do that that thought stuff with me. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, one of the biggest takeaways is this, dog. You should have a woman who has a mind of her own, right? And it has to be a mind that aligns with your mind. Like, if you're a type of person who doesn't want a woman who's dressing provocative and all of that kind of shit there, then you should reach out to a woman who strongly feels that goes against her moral values. That's the woman you need to be with. Because even if she does work around a bunch of 304 Jazabelles and shit like that, she's going to be able to think for herself. And she's going to be confident enough to to not fall prey to their shenanigans and ruin what she got home uh, going on at home, bro. I seen this story play out time and time again, man. The good girl come to work and she starts to get around these Jezebels that already exist at the job and she wants to fit in, right? And next thing you know, she starts to change the way she acts, talks, dress, walks, the whole nine. And she's even hanging out with these people and these people are single, so they want to ruin what she got. Single women keep single women single and single women ruin married women's relationship. It's really that simple, dog. Keep your girl away from them single people dog period point blank do you ever think of getting back together no you want in the video what you want in the video a few <laughs> what you want to do come on you want in the video it's up to you it's your video do you want to record it real quick or not Okay, but now I'm answering you're... your question. I'm not answering your question. Can you imagine my answer? Yeah. It, bro, let me make this quick little video for boss man come out here tripping but look check this out he did the right thing by leaving her partner because once you don't stand on business you're disqualified it's really that simple whatever she done 